Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the trigonometric functions of some special angles. So in your study of trigonometry, you're going to find that there will be certain angles that come up uh, more often than others. And you're going to also find that you're going to be expected to know exact values of those angles rather than the value your calculator gives you when you punch them in. So in this video, I want to talk about what those uh, trig functions are equal to in exact values. And I want to show you a little trick to help you remember those. So first of all, we're going to take a look at one of the special angles, which is 45 degrees. And to do that, I'm going to draw a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And in that triangle, I'm going to let this side equal 1. Because this angle is 45 degrees and this angle is 45 degrees, that means these two sides have to be equal. So that has a length of one unit as well. Um, and it's an isosceles right triangle. So we know that those two, if those two angles are equal, those two sides are equal. Now to find our hypotenuse, we can use our right triangle theorem. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. In this case, 1 squared plus 1 squared will equal c squared. That's our hypotenuse across from our right angle. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So c will be equal to square root of 2. Now that we have all the sides of our right triangle, we can outline what our, our trig functions are. So let's start off with sine. The sine of any angle is the side of the, the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So we'll take a look at this 45 degree angle. The side opposite is one, the hypotenuse is root two. So it's one over root two. And you probably won't see it written as one over root two because whenever you have radicals, square roots, in your denominator, um, you're probably going to be expected to do what's called rationalizing your denominator. And to do that, we're going to multiply numerator and denominator by root 2. By doing that, you're going to get root 2 times root 2, which is square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Rationalizing the denominator just means getting the radical out of your denominator. It can be in your numerator, but it, you don't want it in your denominator. So you'll probably see root 2 over 2 as the ratio for sine of 45 degrees. Cosine of 45 degrees is adjacent to hypotenuse, so 1 over root 2 as well, which is root 2 over 2. And tangent of 45 degrees is opposite over adjacent, so 1 over 1 is simply 1. So those are values that you're probably going to be expected to know, and um, probably in this form. I also want to point out that your angle might be expressed in radians instead of degrees. So if we had an angle of 45 degrees, I showed you in a video on radians how to convert that to radians. So you're going to multiply, I'm going to use dimensional analysis, you're going to multiply by a fraction, pi radians over 180 degrees. The degrees will cancel, so you'll be left with your angle in radians. And then we can simplify 45 into there once, 45 into there. So the angle 45 degrees is equivalent to pi over 4 radians. So therefore, we could say the sine of pi over 4 radians is equal to root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 radians is also root 2 over 2. And tan of pi over 4 radians is equal to 1. So that's one set of values that's going to be important, um, especially when you get into things like tree equations. Another thing I'll point out is knowing this relationship um, is useful not just for finding the trig functions, but for finding the lengths of sides in the triangle if you only have one side. So if, for example, you knew this side was 10 units, then you'll know this side is 10 units as well, and the hypotenuse will be root 2 times 10 units. 
Let's take a look at the other two um, special angles I want to talk about. This is an equilateral triangle, which means all sides are equal. I'm going to let each side be equivalent to two units. Now in any triangle, the three angles add up to 180 degrees. In an equilateral triangle, because the sides are all equal, then the angles have to be equal, which means that they all have to be 60 degrees. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to bisect this angle. And because of some geometry that I'm not gonna go over here, but when we bisect this angle, so this will be 30 degrees, this will be 30 degrees, that will bisect this side, so that will be one unit, that would be one unit, and it will also form a right angle with the base. That's not gonna be true with other triangles, but with isosceles and equilateral triangles, that's gonna be true. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the triangle on the right side, So this is 60 degrees, this is 30 degrees, this is two units, and this is one unit. In order to find this missing side, we're gonna use our right triangle theorem again. So we know that A is one, so one squared plus B, we don't know, equals C squared. So one plus B squared is equal to four. So B squared, subtract one from both sides is three and b will equal root 3. So therefore, this height of this triangle will be root 3. And again, we've got a relationship between the three sides that you might find useful if you know one side and you want to find any of the other two sides. Understand that the side opposite the smallest angle will be the shortest side, and that's going to be one unit. The side opposite the largest angle, 90 degrees, will be the longest side and that will always be double the shortest side. The side opposite the 60 degree angle will be root 3 times whatever the shortest side is. Now we can go through and find our three main trig functions with 30 degrees and then with 60 degrees. So if we wanted to find the sine of 30 degrees it's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse so 1 over 2. The cosine of 30 degrees is the adjacent over the hypotenuse so root 3 over 2. And the tangent of 30 degrees is opposite over adjacent, so 1 over root 3. Again, we can rationalize the denominator by multiplying numerator and denominator by root 3. So we'll get root 3 over root 9, which is just 3. Let's take a look at the trig functions when the angle is 60 degrees. So sine of 60 is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent of 60 degrees is opposite over adjacent. So root 3 over 1. Now you probably will need to know these um, trig functions when your angle is expressed in radians as well as degrees. So let's just talk about that for a minute. If we have 30 degrees in the video that I did on radians, it showed how to convert. I did it with the 45 degrees. I won't do it again with this example, but I will tell you that 30 degrees is pi over six radians. Therefore, we could write all of our, um, instead of 30 degrees, we could write pi over six and all of our special trig functions. Let's do the same thing with 60 degrees. 60 degrees is equivalent to pi over three radians. Therefore, our three trig functions with 60 degrees but expressed as pi over 3 radians would be those values. <laughs> and I know what you're probably thinking. Between the 45 degree or pi over 4 radian and, uh, trig functions and then these ones, that's a lot of numbers to remember, especially because they're fractions. They involve um, pi if you have your angle in radians. They involve radicals. So I'm going to show you a little trick that will hopefully help you uh, remember these values if you're expected to remember them. If you're required to know all of those exact values for those trig functions of your special angles, you might find this very useful. 
set up a chart and you can put your angles in degrees just to remind you what the angles are. So we're going to start at zero degrees and go up to 90 and just increasing. So our special angles are 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. We're going to express those angles in their equivalent uh, radian form. So zero radians, 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians, 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians, 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians, and 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians. So this row will just be the angle. Now, to start off with, for sine, I want you to put a fraction in each of these squares with 2 in the denominator. Then in the numerator, I want you to put square root. And then we're just going to count from 0 to 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are the sine functions of those angles. Let's simplify some of them. Square root of 0 is 0 over 2 is 0. Square root of 1, we can just write that as 1. So the ratio, the sine of 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians is 1 half. Root 2 over 2, there's nothing to simplify there, so we leave it. Sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. We can leave it. And lastly, the sine of 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians will be root 4, which is 2, 2 over 2. That simplifies to equal 1. There are all those special numbers that we talked about for the sign of your special angles, and we've included 0 and pi over 2 radians as well. Now to get cosine, it's even easier. We start here and go backwards. So this will be root 3 over 2. So 1, root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2, 1 half, and 0. So knowing that chart might think, make things easier for you if you have to remember these special values. Tangent, um, I'm going to talk about how you would find that as a, as a ratio when you know sine and cosine, uh, but I'm going to do that when we talk about identities. So we'll just leave it as sine cosine for right now because this is what we need to know for our unit circle, which I'm going to cover in the next video. All right. Take care and we'll see you then.